you so much, Cassandra. Um, Lee Weaver um, from the gallery, uh, from the um, City Coffee crowd back uh, those readings in uh, 2014, and uh, Lee is a very talented actor here in town. Him and his wife, Nan, create these amazing plays, and they put them on. And uh, Lee got in touch with me, and he said, I noticed we have a lot of similar Facebook friends, but we've never met. And so I invited him uh, to, uh, you know, at least check out the readings and all that. And uh, he had a play that he was just debuting called The Box. And it was about uh, this homeless person, and the whole one-act play revolved around that. So I said, Lee, come in character. And uh, it was amazing. I mean, it was living theater at a poetry <laughs> reading. I didn't even tell my wife what Lee and I had planned. And so Lee was heckling me and giving me a hard time. And I acted and pretended to get <laughs> agitated and so forth. And my wife was like, she told me afterwards, she said, I thought you were gonna go off on him. And you were swearing at the open mic and all that. And, uh, and uh, so Lee was totally in character of this disheveled um, homeless person, but had a brilliant poem that he wanted to share at the open mic. And so then after the performance, we broke character, and I said, you know, the part of the um, open mic host was played by myself, Chris Bodor, and the homeless person was played by Mr. Lee Weaver. So. Lee might be presenting something as himself <laughs> or someone else, but let him explain. Yeah, yeah. yeah my name's Jack. I live in a box. I got a sign right on it there. It says Home Sweet Home. That's pretty good. And that one, it comes from a play written way back in the early part of the 19th century. A home sweet, sweet, oh, there's no, oh, you know how it goes. I'm Lee Weaver. <laughs> Thank you for that lovely intro, Chris. On June 18th, 1964, 16 rabbis came to the city of St. Augustine to join in the protests that were going on to rid our city, our state, our country of segregation. All 16 were arrested, and that was the largest mass arrest of Jewish clergy in the history of the United States. They were here on June 18th, 1964, because seven days before, on June 11th, Martin Luther King was arrested when he and Ralph Abernathy went to the Monson Motor Lodge and tried to go in to get a little bit of lunch, knowing full well that they would be denied, be denied access and they were arrested. The only time King was arrested in the state of Florida was here in St. Augustine. He was here on that June 11th because on June 9th, two days before that, he had sent one of his lieutenants from Washington, Andrew Young, to come down here to St. Augustine with the instructions to put a lid on what's going on in St. Augustine. We're this close to the legislation and we don't need another big scene. And there's a big protest planned on there, get down there and shut it down. And so Andrew Young flew down to Jack's, rented the car and all the way driving down to St. Augustine, he rehearsed in his mind how he was gonna tell the folks who were planning to march that not tonight. Dr. King says not tonight. And he walked into the church where 200 people, protesters were waiting with their signs. And when he walked in, they said, Andy's here, Andy's here. And their enthusiasm just picked him up and carried him right out. And he got everybody up to the Plaza de la Constitucion. What I've just shared with you is a part of one of our plays called The Witness, which we are performing in Jacksonville this coming Thursday. My, my muse, my wife and I do about 12 dramas around the country. And uh, I should, I, I've got to tell you, we have a new play opening up here in town on October 12th and 13th called The Attic. It's about Alzheimer's, the LGBTQ movement, the Me Too movement, and pedophilia in the Roman Catholic Church. It's a laugh a minute. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> and it'll be at the Corazon on October 12th and a matinee on the next day on Sunday and talk to us after if you're at all interested in it. What I told you about Andrew Young is a, a part of our drama called The Witness. It's the love story of Maggie and Bo. It's called My Maggie and the Stubborn Colored Man. 1964, My Maggie marched with protesters, one of many whites walking with the coloreds. An exciting time of resolution and dedication for her, for me a time of separation, for when she was off demonstrating, I hung out with my buddies. I would march with her. My Maggie was a Yankee girl from Long Island, New York. I was from right here in St. Augustine, the South. My middle name is Stuart, and my last name is Lee. Beauregard Stuart Lee, I always wanted to think that I was kin to both Jeb and Robert E. She made me take my stars and bars off my rear view mirror and scrape the decals off my window. Small price to pay to be with my Maggie, the prettiest gal in St. Augustine. She loved me, and I loved her, my Maggie. She went to D.C. to hear King speak, and when she come back, that was all she talked about, Dr. King this, and Dr. King that, and Dr. King the other thing. I kept quiet. She'd drink out of the colored folks drinking fountains, and white folks would chastise her, you know, say things to her. She'd just smile and say, I have a dream, and that would rile them up all the more. <laughs> I said, you got dream fever, gal. And she'd smile and say, yes, I do. Yes, I do. I have dream fever. She went to Atlanta one week to protest, to march, to demonstrate. One night while she was gone, I went to the middle of town with my buddies. We heard this young fella, this Andrew Young guy, was coming from Washington, D.C. to our town, my town. St. Augustine, to lead a demonstration. He came with 200 marchers to the plaza. Young told them to wait on the corner while he came over to talk to us whites. Many of us were Klansmen. I was there. I was with them. He had guts. I'll tell you, coming by himself, this colored man. As soon as he got near, we jumped, and one of my friends got him on the head with a lead sap, a blackjack, bam, right on the head, and down he went. As soon as he struggled to get back on his feet, another one of us clipped him on the chin, and he went down a second time, and he struggled again to stand up, but we were on him then, and some of us were kicking him in the front side, and some of us were kicking him in the back, and I, I kicked him in his head cop made us stop, told us to let him say his piece. We did, and he did. He had guts, this stubborn, tough, colored man here in my town. We followed him as he walked back to his marchers, this Andrew Young, this tough, stubborn, colored man. I watched him disappear into the crowd, and there she was. My Maggie, she wasn't in Atlanta. My Maggie had seen it all. Our eyes met and she looked so broken. I put my head down and, and when I looked up again, she was gone. She knew what I was and I knew it too. I was a racist. I never saw my Maggie again. Thank you.